every couple of years or so, I guess it's turned out I like to take a look back and see where we've been uh, over the years and that's what we're looking at here. So uh, if we look at the, how long has this been, 16 years we've been doing this or is that 15 years I guess now? Um, 2020 will be our 16th year. We had a, I was listening to a chat the other day and people I guess aren't familiar with everything we've been doing over the years and I guess if somebody's sort of YouTube centric or they've just jumped online and they're just following feeds when they're not paying attention to archives or paying attention to um, older stuff, then you might not catch all the stuff that's been going on. So in an effort to let people know and then in an effort to archive it all just to see what else has been going on, uh, I think it uh, was an interesting effort. And then as the project evolved, I started to see uh, some patterns in our uh, overall philosophies and where we've been going. So that's what we're going to take a look at. So if we fill in all those years, that's what it looks like to have 15 years worth of a project. Um, we started back in 97 actually doing stuff online and by 2004 we had clients and I stopped working for Microsoft and we went full time into online stuff, websites and uh, building websites for people, maintaining websites. Maybe we did some computer work, we did some online tech support and stuff like that, but uh, basically a couple of them, well, I quit my day job and uh, a couple other guys went part time and we went full time into our company and then gun websites uh, started in 2004 officially. That's when we bought the website and decided to intentionally put some effort into just guns, putting gun stuff online. And that was a long time ago as far as the history of the internet and stuff. But one of the things that um, we did in 2005 was attend SHOT Show for the first time as media, going through and getting media credentials and uh, actually working with the SHOT Show uh, media people to figure out how to determine who owns a website that was kind of neat and uh, getting I think we might have been one of the first if not the first media to come in as predominantly internet and that wasn't really a big thing yet it wasn't that didn't have much uh, it wasn't established and it wasn't like considered real media so it was a step I think to uh, to join in to the uh, media portion of SHOT Show back then and uh, throughout the years we've gone every year. Uh, it used to be in Florida every once in a while so we have a couple of times where we attended in Florida. It used to be at the convention center and kind of see here from 2010 on it's been at the, uh, the uh, Sands. So most of the experience with SHOT Show now has been in Vegas at the Sands but luckily we did have a couple of years of experience there to travel around and see some different venues and stuff and when we started to look at that, um, that's been our, it's been our like backbone of our projects, uh, going to the SHOT Show, seeing the industry, I think gives us a, a finger on the pulse, it lets us see the industry, uh, not just the transactions and the, the uh, commerce side of it, but the whole industry, and it brings everybody together, so that's been definitely an, a resource for us and an advantage being so close to Vegas uh, to be able to attend in such a long streak. So that's been a big part of our projects and a big influence on us being able to uh, uh, maintain our relationships with people at a thing like SHOT Show. Uh, so then getting into uh, some of the things that we evolved, I guess, along the way, we started going to the NRA show in 2009, and that was pretty cool. And there's multiple ways to look at our history, but starting in in four when we just were basically amateurs playing. Uh, somewhere around 2005 we started taking it a little bit more seriously and uh, by 2009 we attended the NRA show just to see what was so different between it and SHOT and it was eye-opening and uh, encouraged us to attend it again. We attended it in 2010 but since it's a traveling show uh, it's not been something we've been able to attend so as far as priorities go it has not been a priority. If it ever shows up in Phoenix I'm sure we'll attend again but uh, instead, I'll go on to the next slide, and we attended the Gun Rights Policy Conference finally in 2015. I became aware of it in 2009, and I'm kicking myself to this day that I didn't attend when it was in Phoenix in 2009. I'm sure we would have had a different gun websites and potentially a different environment today if we would have started going as active as we are six years earlier. But uh, in 2015, uh, thanks to the prodding of Charles Heller, who knew what we were doing, and expected and anticipated I would enjoy the, the gun rights policy conference I did attend 
and uh, that certainly changed the route of what we've been doing. And as we get into more and more levels on this thing, you'll see that uh, this was definitely a pivot point. 2005 was a pivot point for us. Uh, 2009 was a bit of a pivot point. Uh, getting to that meeting in Phoenix was neat, but then having to get to the meeting in North Carolina the next year was a challenge. And we'll talk about that a bit. But this uh, kind of shows that we've traveled a little bit. Uh, but once we get into um, the next levels of our experience, I guess, chronologically, uh, the travel is going to become more and more part of it. So one of the first things we did with uh, gun websites was um, share our experiences out here in the West. We come, well, I came from out East. Uh, the other guys grew up out here and they just didn't realize what they had out here. And I would tell my friends about what we could do as far as hunting and going shooting and and we just posted stuff as hobbyists to share our experiences out here and to brag a little bit and to uh, to let them see what it's like to be out in the West. And as those websites got used and eventually we'll talk about how we monetize those and became serious about them, uh, we were exposed to firearms training. And it's not something I sought out. It was something that came to us. And uh, being who I am, I challenged the people. It was a guy from Front Sight. Doug came in and uh, we'll talk about a, a chat room thing that we had going for in a minute here. But uh, Doug came in and set, and was basically spamming our chat room. And I said, hey, either, you know, put in, or I said something like, uh, put up or shut up or something like that. Like, quit just posting ads here. And he said, oh, no, I'm not trying to post ads. I'm trying to get people into training. So come experience our training. And we took him up on that. We went up to Front Sight for four days, five days, and experienced uh firearms training for the first time for me since hunter, hunter safety classes or a military stuff and it's amazing uh, it was as eye-opening and that definitely changed you can see how much influence training had for our projects uh, we could not get enough training me and the other guys um, dug in and and not only enjoyed the skill sets and the knowledge uh, but the experience of seeing others teach and most of us are CCW instructors the people that were the first on website shooting team, the three or four of us that started the whole thing. Uh, all but one or two are CCW instructors and and uh, NRA instructors and um, attending classes is a neat way to experience different methods, I guess, different techniques of instruction and firearms instruction. Certainly useful and interesting and, and varied. So uh, firearms training uh, became a big part of our initial focus. Again, we were trying to share our experiences with being able to shoot out here recreationally but that's a heck i mean look at when we started this whole thing in 2004 is the end of the assault weapons ban uh, back then i was buying seven a thousand rounds of 762 by 39 for 75 dollars or something like that we would drive up to phoenix i remember getting pissed if it cost a hundred bucks we would consider it a wasted trip if we had to pay a hundred dollars for a thousand rounds and we'd buy several thousand rounds each weekend and or each month we'd buy maybe 10,000 rounds or something and then go shoot it out into the desert just through these AKs that we could now buy. So, um, you know, for a couple of years, the project, or the gun websites was really just shooting into hills and playing with what we could now own after the assault weapons ban. And, uh, and once we saw that there was more to do than just waste ammo, basically, more to do than just pull triggers to actually have some focus and to learn and to practice and to drill that became super interesting so you can see that we did quite a few uh classes i can't say that i've got a certificate from every class i didn't attend every one i didn't uh attend every one as a student for sure i probably have maybe 12 certificates out of this 12 classes i attended and graduated from but uh, auditing classes attending classes to help share them uh, was really what most of this is and Again, I think that that helped influence. We brought cameras to classes, not to um, to give away secrets or to to offer uh, insight into like ways to pick on instructors for problems or issues, but instead to share what firearms training was with people uh, who had never heard of it before. And we knew we weren't alone, and that uh, this was something that was fairly new uh, to just civilians, whatever you want to call regular CCW holders, and just people that are. Uh, experience in firearms at whatever pace or rate they're in. So um, again, some of this first initial stuff was um, not, I'm not going to suggest this is the first time cameras were ever taken to the firearms classes, but we certainly um, became part of the industry uh, by 
knowing these instructors and and getting in with the uh, circles and and creating after action reports and reviews that were professional and useful for them and students uh, existing alumni they could look at our pictures and point to them on the on the forums when we look at the timeline here this was all pre youtube this was when the forums were really big and photographs were all we had it was expensive and difficult and tedious and really un, not practical to post video yet uh, so this was a lot of um, exploration and networking and and getting comfortable with, or getting instructors comfortable with us and our technique and our skills uh, and uh, again it was a formative part of our um, experience because we knew that we were in an area with firearms and, and I don't want to call it education as much as insight you know sharing uh, the firearms culture with people this was something that we could see that people had not experienced before and they appreciated some insight into uh, the various aspects of firearms training it also got us traveling and getting comfortable with meeting new people and uh, taking some risks as far as uh, um, not going along with the typical recipes the guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year practice at least once a month and carry every day thanks for watching gunwebsites.com